All right, well, I've been a little busy, um, but I wanted to show what I was up to today. I'm making the grooves for my uh, tracks, but they're full of sawdust right now. They're drawer slides, full extension, that I'm making the recess for with my router. So I built a jig, just a very similar to the one I showed before. The groove has to be uh, one and uh, I think seven sixteenths wide. So I took the half inch bit, added fifteen sixteenths. So this is six and fifteen sixteenths apart. And I squared it and all with my square, blah, blah, blah. Put a bunch of screws in it, <coughs> clamp it on the jig, set the depth. I put the tape on here to stop chipping the edge of uh, the wood, and it worked just absolutely marvelous. So now we have the recessed slides, and I'm going to finish this cut up. Right now, I've been around this perimeter of it, and I'm just nibbling away at it. Because the router likes to run away like a madman when they dig in. And you can't get away from that. There I clamped it down, I put the tape on, I didn't get any chip out. So just a few chop tips here and progress on the uh, routing of the grooves. Let's see. He drops right in. Oh yeah, perfect. I did leave, leave, left just a sliver of room to give me a little wiggle room putting it together. Measured from this groove to that groove to make sure these are parallel so the door won't jam. I didn't rely on the square edge of this. I used this square up here to cut this one. But then I measured from this edge to this edge and this edge to this edge and made a mark and squared everything up to that. Just some hints to try to make your, uh, your work accurate. Let me get my fox tail here. I got some vacuuming to do now, don't I? Woo! Now, I've got all my other panels that I made yesterday, which you'll see eventually, or what you might see earlier in this video. Now, this might look funny at first, but this is the leading edge here. This is the edge that goes against the wall here. So I just cut this panel so that my last board was the same width as all the rest. And um, yes, they're longer than the wood, but that's because there's a two inch face frame. So these are going to stick out two inches, tie into the face frame. So see, there's just a half inch here. I was going to leave it, but I just blew it out. So that's how the two slides are going to go in. My dilemma is, <laughs> I have to, uh, I think I need to make the door and put the door in. Oh, by the way, I left it a little over a sixteenth of an inch high so the door won't drag. So there you go. That's going to be vertically mounted, of course, like this on the end of that one cabinet with the door beside. This goes close to the refrigerator and the cabinets here so the door will slide back so she can get easier access. And I might take this all the way to the wall just so it'll come all the way back, but I gotta make sure my extension, which looks like it goes perfectly, goes way out. So this overextends, which is great. I will be able to uh, put a stop. I'm gonna put a metal tab or something on the door at the bottom or just below one of the count, uh, shelves so it stops between the face frame 
and a magnetic catch that holds it, but it shouldn't need a catch, really. All right. I think I've got everything built. Now I need to sand and start finishing everything. Isn't that a ball? I'm just going to take the, the orbital sander and go over everything, guys. Right down to it, folks. We already have two coats on these uh, panels. And uh, they were sanded before the first coat and lightly after the second. And they're still smooth as glass, but I'm just going to touch them with this 220. Just to take off any fuzz. And make sure they're smooth as they can possibly be. And then we'll pack cloth them off. Oh, that's just like glass. And there's not much there to take off, so I'm just, I'm not pushing a lot of, a lot of uh, surface pressure or nothing. Just, oh yeah, baby. I want to hit these edges just a little bit. I forgot to do that the last time. I got a, I got a splinter right here. I got to be very careful of because I don't want to break it out. It's starting to split away, but it'll be fine. And it's sealed down by the polyurethane. I've been working around the shop quite a bit today. I uh, had that 4x8 sheet of 60,000 sheet metal. I don't know, I can tell you what gauge it is, but I don't know what that is. 11 or something. Uh, that was on the trailer deck. And I've come to the final conclusion that I really am going to put aluminum diamond plate on it. Just for appearance and durability. No rusting, no staining, no stuff you put in there. Oh yeah. So I have 12 of these panels to do. And I'm sure you don't want to watch me do them all. I'll just let you see me put some of the last coat on these. I got myself a little block clean. dress up the tongues on these so they can fit better. Because these are awfully, awfully tight and there's a polyurethane uh, seeping into some of them. They're going to be extremely tight. So, I got this little bitty block plane right here. So I can just shave each side of those tongues so they fit together when we get these babies up to the lake. Plus, this will give the surface a little more tooth for the final coat. The final coat will turn out perfectly. I've used this. This is the now I've said it before. Get the Minwax clear satin polyurethane. Make sure you get it in the quartz. If you get it into the gallon, it's going to be that crap that looks like coffee and it's really, really dark and it's you know the politically correct version. So. If you get it in the quartz, you can still just make sure it doesn't say something about 3.5 pint oil compliant on it. I might have shaved this before because this is what the standard can looks like. Clear satin. There's no uh, 350 uh, warning on here. This is what you want. It's honey clear and it drives that way. All right, we're going to shut you down and uh, I'll show you me. Uh, just putting the coat Before, on a couple of yeah. them when I'm ready. Blah, blah, blah. Before we get started, I want to show you what I actually did today. This is a, a piece of that steel deck from the trailer. I don't know how thick it is, 60 thousandths or so. Um, yeah, it's got a little patina to it, but it'll be fine for welding. I won't burn the top of the bench when I weld stuff on here. I cut a piece of it from the behind piece. And I just slipped behind there for now, but I think what I'm going to do 
is maybe I'll take that piece out. I've got another piece here five foot long. Maybe I'll bring it up here, cut the hole for my outlet in it, and uh, lag it to the wall. And then where they come together here, um, maybe I'll just put some RTV on it or lag it or uh, tack it so the sparks don't go down behind in the cracks of the wall, who knows where. Anyway, that's it. That was a lot of fun with the, with the, the uh, grind wheel. Put a thin grind wheel on there and cut it. That was the name of that tune. All right, well, back to the painting. So, well, I won't call it painting. Putting the final finish on. Clean bowl, clean brush. I took them in last night, cleaned them with paint thinner, and washed them with Dawn and, and hot water. I think you're going to have to just about use up a cork for this. There's about a third left, but the, the more you do, the less it sinks in, you know. So, all I do now, I've already if you saw me sanding with the, the sanding pad, the Norton 5X sanding pads are called. They're about, I don't know, what you say, three and a half by four and a half, maybe five. That one happens to be a 220 grit. Anyway, and they've been tack clothed, brushed with a foxtail, and then tack clothed. So I start here in the middle, and I like using a bristle brush. You can use whatever you want. But the last coat does not sink in much at all, so like one brush full will probably cover half a face of these. And maybe need a little more. Three dips. And then I'm only dipping the bristles in about a quarter of an inch. And I'm trying to look across this at the glare of the lights to make sure that I don't miss any spots. I want them all to look wet. And uh, brush, of course, with the grain. I probably don't need to dig down in those grooves. It probably flows right in there. So. This is the one I've shown you many times. This one has the most millwork to it. This is the one that uh, goes along with the refrigerator beside it, so you can't open the door out. So I milled the grooves, excuse me, just had venison hot dogs left over from last year. Oh, I gotta show you the Chihuahua too. I think this brush was specifically noted as being good for polyurethane, if I'm not mistaken, which I often am. I have to go like that just to get the paint or the finish started on him. Just a tad. I make sure it's wet enough to get a continuous coat. I'm not worried about it dripping off the edges because all the edges on all these panels are covered by other uh, stuff. So I just want to make sure I get that chamfer good. All right. Brush out any bubbles. Check again for Dry spots. And I gotta show you the, the mouse of the Chihuahua, whatever my wife calls it. If you look in the middle of the left board, now where'd he go? There he goes on the oh there he is. See the little Chihuahua face? <laughs> Alright, so I'm just gonna put this guy in the safe spot over here, not tripping breaking. Have 
that's the big panel. And then we'll do just, uh, we're going to do these one at a time. This one has an exposed edge. Now this is for the end of the island. I've already tack clothed all these just moments ago, before I started filming here, so. And I got these up on the sticks, so I don't run my bristles into dirt on the bench. So anyway, these are the ends of the breakfast bar cabinet. And I did kind of a screw up. I was supposed to make the face frame on the front extend out the ends three quarters of an inch to cover up the raw edge of this. And in my uh, enthusiasm to get it done, I didn't do that. So the raw edges of these will be shown seeing on the sides of the cabinet. Let's see if you're seeing what I'm seeing. Yeah. This edge will be seen facing out into the room, but it's kind of over the underhang, or under the overhang of the countertop. And uh, I just don't think anybody's going to notice, or they'll think it's a design feature, you know. And it's funny, you get a lot of little fine bubbles in this stuff sometimes. But they, uh, they soon break. And pop and it turns into just a glass smooth finish. Now I like the satin look anyway. I don't want to do anything in high gloss. High gloss just does not appeal to me and it shows every single little piece of dirt or nick. So I really didn't want to do that. So I decided, I've always used the satin. The satin look to me looks like the old classic colonial style uh, hand rubbed oil finish. Now this stuff isn't soaking in at all, I can see. It's just as wet and glossy as it can possibly be. All right guys, well I've got 10 more of these panels to do. Six of which I believe Attach end to end to cover the back of the whole peninsula coming out into the room. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing to them and I'll bring you back when I got them all done and give you a view. All right, guys and gals, we are done with the finishing of all the, uh, the uh, cover panels. Now these go for the sides of the cabinets that don't have doors. So like the ends of the island, the side of the peninsula coming out between the kitchen and the, and the living room area. Um, the uh, bare end of the cabinet and, and some of the cabinets that just don't have room for doors. I have an upper that has a piece of this already on it. So um, this little piece is for the end of the 30 inch cabinet at the top above the sink there. What the heck is that? Little bug decided he was going to land in there. So he's gone now. Let me give him a little lick. So you got to be after this crap all the time, don't you? Dang it. Alright. It's already starting to dry up a little bit. I don't want to mess with it too much. The stuff that's getting dry already will, you know, your brush will leave like, you know, streaks like grain marks in it. But look at the finish, how smooth that is after the sanding. Now that is not going to be glossy like that. That will tone down to a soft satin sheen. Again, as I said, like, it looks almost like they were hand rubbed with oil. There's some very interesting little uh, knots in these things too. One of them I saw looked like a little poodle. I guess I showed you that. I saw and I found another one. Kind of looks like a dog here somewhere. Yeah, this one. That look like a dog looking at you. You can see his tongue hanging out under his nose. Oh yeah. 
All right, so time to go wash the brush out and uh, just, uh, tomorrow we pack these all up and head for the lake and Friday I will be installing them on the cabinetry. All right, guys and gals, it's been a pleasure uh, working with you. <laughs> It was kind of interesting to make this tongue and groove. I'd never made it before, but I'd made, I, well, I'd made tongue and groove before, but not with the chamfered edge, just to make up panels. But these turned out extremely well with, when I use the, uh, there's a lot of crap on the router table right now, but you can see I use that, that fingerboard to press it down so it doesn't bow. So that kept my edges nice and the grooves positioned perfectly in the edge of the board. If you have a buckle in it and you press up and down on it as you push it through, the, your groove will be wavy or your tongue will be wavy. So you got to have pressure on it. Oh, and I peeled the tape off these tongues and uh, I did a good job of keeping the, uh, the finish from uh, getting into them and making them swell. So, as I said, I got a little block plane right here that I'm going to go down these after they're dry and then test fit them into the panel that they're going to go into and make sure that they go together easy when we go to assemble. Alright guys and gals, love. I got three more quarts for the rest of the project. God bless, take care, we'll see you next time on Bob's Barn Workshop.